Greetings, Steamiums. Once again, this is your soul, and this is an introductory video to the project Steam Passport. And this is something I've been working on for a few weeks, actually, well, a couple of months behind the scenes, talking to people, researching, and uh, written some documentation. The, the short version is this is a project to facilitate the creation of user accounts on Steam using every possible method that we can and in such a way that basically Steam becomes attractive to people to want to use more so than it is right now. Uh, when I first created an account back in 2016 I seem to remember that I had problems right from the very beginning. I did eventually get an account. I had problems after that creating another account and I just thought well this is you know uh, it's a beta project just starting out clearly onboarding is a very important part of that process so I'm sure they'll fix all the bugs quickly enough and I'll just get on and use the system. Uh, but as time went on, a year passed, two years passed, I realised that actually they haven't really done a whole lot to improve that situation. And signing up to a system is the first experience many people have of it. So it needs to be good, it needs to be professional, it needs to be reliable and we just don't really have that. So from the perspective of growing the network and increasing the value of the token and, and just generally getting people to use Steam instead of using Facebook and so on, it's very important that we can actually address this issue. So that's what Steam Passport set up to do. And we also have another onboarding project, project which got announced uh, almost exactly the same time as I was intending to make this video and announce Steam Passport, which is Steam Onboard onboarding. And that project is more focused, as I understand it, on education and marketing, which Steam Passport was intended to also include within it. And uh, however, since they've already kind of jumped ahead and, and started working on that project, uh, I've chosen to move the marketing and outreach side of things to the back burner for Steam Passport. So now Steam Passport is going to focus primarily on the technicalities of actually creating accounts in novel ways, a few different ways we have of doing it, with the end result being that the end users will have free accounts and enough Steam power to actually use those accounts um, without any abuse taking place and without them even needing to wait, you know, two weeks or whatever, how long it how long it's taking Steam it nowadays to, to approve accounts. So the technicalities of Steam make this actually a bit more complicated than you might expect. And even in one of the latest live streams, Ned, the CEO of Steam Inc., said words to the effect of it was too difficult a challenge to pull off, I think, you know, improving the sign-up process, something like that, he said. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with him on that, and I think we've got some good solutions to this. And actually, I think it's been simplified in my mind enough now that the next document that I put out is going to be a full specification for the software we need and we're going to probably start making it as an open source project, probably. Um, I'm going to take you across to the page for um, Scene Passport. So you can see here we've got a Discord server already and uh, yeah, if you want to keep up with the project then please follow along at Steam Passport and come and join us on the Discord server. So there's a few witnesses in there, a few programmers. Uh, interested people and yeah if you want to bring any of your skills or resources to the project then let us know and let's see if you can help out or if you've got any feedback then we're always in there to, to have a chat. So I've got here the document that I wrote a few weeks ago which you're welcome to have a look at as well. I'll leave the link under the video or post wherever you see this. Um, I control steampassport.com, steam.life and steam.systems in relation to this project. Uh, got those domain names with the intention of using that for this. My background is in systems architecture and engineering, so I'm quite used to writing documents for projects. And I've written quite a lot here. I've done quite a lot of research and I've covered many topics relating to this uh, that needed to be thought about in order to understand how to best go about solving these, these issues. Uh, I've addressed retention of users, why is it that users leave the system and how do we stop them leaving the system. I've addressed uh, issues of identity, I've ad ad um, addressed anti-spam issues, anti-abuse issues, uh, security in general and basically everything related to this project from an overview perspective. Um, I've also spelled out basically that we need to uh, really need to do this in order to attract all the users that are leaving other networks because they're being censored and that to me is a very important thing here. There's a huge demand for, for the kind of services that Steam offers but 
Steam, I think, is losing out because of its few kind of weak points that we need to really address. So, uh, like I've said here, there's no use having the world's greatest product if people have difficulty getting into the shop to buy it or don't even know about it to begin with. It's fairly basic business kind of stuff here. Um, showing you here also the fact that the traffic to Steam dropped by 50% after the Hard Fork 20 uh, issues and uh, you know now it's more or less recovered I think. Um, so yeah just commenting here that social networks are becoming antisocial with Google's good sensor document that got leaked which you may, may not be aware of. They basically a, a document was leaked from Google explaining that that they need to be the sensor of the internet and it's possible to be a good sensor and it's needed because people just can't be trusted on the internet. Uh, I'm not sure I quite agree with that, but along with the fact that Facebook literally deleted hundreds of pages with some with millions of followers, we have a very large number of people knowing that they want to find an alternative social network. So it's a perfect time to act. And so I've got the project goals here. Uh, initially, making joining Steam simpler, quicker and more easily understood. Decreasing the learning curve of new users, improve the public image of Steam, and increase the chances that those who would enjoy and support Steam will discover and use it. So it's really a combination of marketing, education, and providing technical solutions. I've got sub targets here, or sub objectives for technical uh, aspects. So divide the strategy for efficient pooling of claimed accounts from numerous sources. Some of these things probably aren't actually going to be done now for various reasons, which I'll go into in later posts in more detail. Um, there are several ways of creating accounts on Steam, and the aim is to handle all of them, but some of them are already being handled by other people, and what we really need is the newer options to be made, so they're going to be the highest priority. Um, for example, at the moment you can go to steamit.com to create an account, you might have to wait a couple of weeks, you might not get your account, there are problems with it. Or you can go to a third party uh, site, which are listed also on the sign up page for steamit.com, such as a non Steam and Block Trades. And you can pay them a small amount of cryptocurrency and you'll get an account straight away. And that's an attractive feature for people that have cryptocurrency, but it's getting a little bit esoteric for, for new users who don't really understand cryptocurrency. It's really a higher level of technicality than we should be placing on new users, just average users from Facebook and, and Google and so on. So uh, when we were at Steamfest, the idea was put forward by numerous people uh, to have a concept of incubation of new accounts. And there's different ways of, of handling that, but the summary of it is when a new user signs up to go through that process they are given a temporary account which they don't control fully but it allows them to make posts to the Steam blockchain and people will know that it's a temporary account. Once they've earned enough in payouts on their posts via that temporary account the money they've earned from that process can then be used to pay for a full account for them and that could be made quite fluid from their perspective the experience could be quite straightforward the one part that isn't clear is, is this going to be a centralized system or is it going to be something that each DAP creator, operator runs for themselves? Um, there's pros and cons to both of those and we need to iron those out with, with the vested interests. Uh, it, from Steam Passport's perspective, it makes sense to have a centralized system and the DAP creators can use an API to plug their websites like um, DTube and DSound and so on into Steam Passport so that they can just rely on Steam Passport, a bit like the way they rely on Steam Connect in some cases for authorization. Uh, they could rely on Steam Passport for signups. That's one option, or we could make software that they can install themselves. Um, partially, this is an issue of simplicity and uh, what works best for end users and everyone involved. Partially, it's also an issue of funding as well, because uh, although I'm not doing this to get paid, ultimately I'm doing this to try and help Steam, at the same time, myself and other technical people working on this probably are going to have to put a lot of time into this. And, uh, you know, we aren't, at the moment, we aren't at least aren't getting paid for doing it. Uh, it's not like we've been hired by Steemit to do this or we have a delegation or anything. Uh, so it may be that we need to initially run a centralised service to monetize things. Uh, probably it would be the DAP uh, operators that would um, perhaps... Uh, in some way they would they would be funding it in a small degree um, initially or if we get you know de donations or delegations then maybe we won't need to do that and we can just make an open source project that everyone can use on whatever DAP they want without needing us uh, to have a centralized server running it all. 
I prefer the option of, of giving everyone access to the open source project and letting them run their own instance of it in some way, uh, especially since I'm trying to make Steam more decentralized and removing the sign-up process responsibility from Steam Inc. Uh, is a good idea from the decentralization perspective. It removes the one point of failure problem that we have. Uh, in other words, if they fail, then the system fails. The whole Steam, a great deal of it fails, basically, if Steam it fails. The more tasks we can take away from them and decentralize, the better. Uh, but if we then really just take that feature or function away from them and then centralize it into a new project, we haven't really decentralized a great deal in a sense. We've just moved the responsibility. So it would be great, in short, if DAP creators and other people would delegate to us so that we can be funded, so that we can uh, not have to be reliant on uh, some sort of beneficiary system or something like that in order to get the project paid for and to get the work done. If you do know of anybody or you yourself want to delegate or donate or upvote us, then please, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. But you can come and talk to us in the Discord server and uh, discuss that if you like. So, yeah, the technicalities of this um, will come, will be more explained in a future document, which I'm actually currently writing. Hopefully that's going to be online in the next couple of weeks before Christmas or before the end of 2018, depending on what happens. And I've, but I have asked lots of people and I've got lots of feedback and we've thought this through. I've thought this through a lot and done a lot of research, talked to outsource private companies and so on. I'm pretty sure I know what needs to be done at this point. Um, so we have the option of incubating new accounts, uh, which is a whole new system that needs to be coded to make that happen. It doesn't exist yet, as far as I know. Uh, we have the option of paying for accounts, which uh, we may look at doing as, as well, but there are already people doing that. So at the moment, that's not a high priority. Uh, we have the option also of using resource credits to supply people with accounts. And Oracle D have already created a system for that that allows DAP creators to um, automate that process to some extent. And there's also FairSeam's Fair Steam Inviter tool that uh, does its own thing from the perspective of you inviting your friends and using your resource credits. What we're looking to do is maybe enhance that and add in a layer of abuse protection as well so that... Uh, so that we don't have any kind of abuse of these resource credits and accounts happening. So there's there's one aspect to this technically, which is abuse monitoring. There's one which is signing up users um, for incubation accounts, and one that maybe probably will get integrated in with, with uh, Oracle D solution um, for resource credit accounts. And you know, there's a few other things up our sleeve as well to make this work um, effectively. The marketing, as I said, uh, will be probably handled primarily by Steam Onboarding at this point, the other project, and uh, we may come back to that later on, um, mainly because after speaking to some of the witnesses and DAP creators, it was clear that many people considered that we need to have a culture shift in Steam relating to what people think Steam is, and um, the fact that we can't really, it's not sustainable to just constantly keep paying out rewards all the time, we, unless we have money coming in as well. So Oracle D and other people have taken the lead um, in resolving that and in uh, taking steps to bring money constantly into Steam. And so if we're going to have an educational platform that teaches people about Steam and helps new users understand what Steam is and how to have success on Steam, they really do need to be taught about that as well. And they need to have an, an upgrade in the kind of economic understanding they have. And they need to understand that Steam isn't just a social network, it's an economic system. And to have success, you need to be both social and economically minded and just doing things to help the collective energy of the of the system and not just coming in and trying to constantly get paid like you're working for an employer because that's not what it is. Um, so yeah, we may come back and revisit uh, the, the idea of actually producing educational material and marketing material, but that will be after we've completed the technical tasks. Uh, so yeah, skipping through here, we've got some stuff about team building and, and how to unite people together to work on the project. I've uh, got some thoughts here that I wrote about the um, bid bot problem and how we can deal with that. And I have put forward solutions that don't overpower anyone, that aren't annoying, uh, which actually empower every Steam user to choose whether or not they want to experience the effect of bid bots or not. And while that doesn't completely prevent bid bots from being used, it means that the market truly does get to decide what they want to do with bid bots. Um, you know, people have claimed that the market decides when it comes to bid bots and therefore. The fact that people still use BidBots means that really Steam users want to use BidBots, but that doesn't take into account the people that don't use BidBots and the fact that they can't stop 
them having an effect in their life and uh, there's nothing really they can do. I mean, it just because it, a lot of people don't use BigBots and some people do use BigBots doesn't mean to say the majority want BigBots. So by giving people the empowered ability through the user interfaces of the websites they use when they're using Steam to actually remove the effects of bots, that would actually go a long way to, I think, reinstating proof of brain and removing the attraction of people to delegate to BigBots and to use BigBots in the first place. Without ranting on too much about this, I remember before BigBots were in use on Steam and Proof of Brain actually was quite good. You would see high quality posts at the top of the list and useful things relating to Steam. Whereas now, because you can buy votes and you actually need to really buy votes to get your posts to the top of trending, trending really is just a, a list of posts from people who have got money that want to buy bit votes. That's really all it is. They might have something useful to say, they might not, but I would say on average the quality of those posts is significantly lower than it was before BigBoss existed. Um, so again, from a, from, a, from a marketing and PR perspective, it's very important to solve that problem because I know that most of my friends don't use Steam because they because of that. Basically, they they see the unfairness of it, and they you know that they, often they're trying to get away from Facebook and corporate sort of platforms that exploit people in so many different ways. Uh, and if they see an alternative that's meant to be providing solutions to all these things and it has its own forms of exploitation and things, they're just immediately turned off and they'll go somewhere else. They'd probably rather use a platform that doesn't have any money on it than use one that that does and uh, where their reach isn't really um, reflective of the merit of their posts. I think that's what it comes down to. Um, so we have the concept also of, of maybe rewarding people that delegate to Steam Passport. Uh, with curation rewards for the creation of, of new users and so on. There's various different options there. Uh, we're a bit, a little bit hindered in that I discovered that Steam doesn't allow us to delegate delegation. So we can't re-delegate. So if a whale delegates a load of Steam power for us to use to uh, give to new users to power up their accounts, we actually can't do that because the blockchain doesn't allow re-delegation. Uh, so... Uh, the only way that we can uh, give delegations to accounts uh, on loan, let's say, like Steam Inc. does, is if we actually have our own Steam power. So that's something we might build up to, but that's not high on the priority list. Um, however, we are definitely interested in receiving delegations and in looking to reward delegators in the ways that they see fit or that they want. So, again, if you uh, or anyone you know might want to delegate to us, we're happy to discuss you know, your thoughts on that and what you might want out of it to see if we can facilitate that. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to read through this document in your own time. There's lots of stuff in security and anti-abuse and anti-spamming and all these different options and ideas that people have put forward, just thinking them through. Um, account recovery is a big part of this because uh, when new accounts are created, if the account's hacked, the person potentially has a way to recover their account, but only if the account trustee, as they're called, uh, takes steps to make that happen. And Steam Inc. will do that in some cases, and so will other account providers. So any system that produces accounts for people has to really have a way of doing account recovery, so we need to create software to handle that as well. Um, that will probably be made open source regardless, so that other people can use it. Um, so yeah, this kind of covered more or less a very quick overview of this document. There's lots of stuff in here, but... Uh, as I said, there'll be a new document coming out in, another, in the next couple of weeks that really goes into a much more updated and detailed version of this information um, that's more relevant maybe to what we're actually going to be doing. Uh, so thanks for listening, and uh, yeah, do stay tuned to the Steam Passport channel on Steam for more updates, and I look forward to reading your comments and thoughts on this, and if you, again, if you know any programmers, if you are a programmer, if you are interested in helping us out in general, then do get onto the Discord space and say hello and uh, we'll see what we can do. Peace to all and uh, yeah, catch you soon. Bye.